Hello everybody, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. I'm your host, Joel Michael. What I have for you today is from... Acer, this is the Aspire 3. It could be grandma's next notebook, but could it also be your next notebook, you tech-savvy, savvy tech you? Let's find out. This, then, is the Acer Aspire 3 from 2022. It's available in all sizes, but I'm only going to address the 17-inch iterations in this video. This particular example with the weakest specs should set you back about $450 at the most, and comes with the Intel Core i3 1115G4, a dual-core, four-threaded CPU that clocks six megs of cache up to 4.1 gigahertz. The integrated GPU, then, is the Intel UHD something or other, the takeaway here, is that it's not Iris XE, like what you'll find on the 11th gen Core i5s and above. 8 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory runs in dual channel thanks to 4 gigs on board and a 4 gig DIMM, and it comes with a 256 gig NVMe SSD with more storage options. To use this behemoth, you'll be staring into its 17.3 inch LCD non-touch screen that shows 900 Ps at 60 Hz, which is more than 720 but still less than 1080. All told then, it's powered by a minuscule 37 watt hour battery, which might sound tiny, but the battery life does have its surprises. More expensive models start at $550 and have Core i5s, 1080p screens, and more memory and hard drive space. Is it worth spending the extra cash? This review should help you decide. The included AC adapter doesn't have a footprint, more like a toe print at only 45 watts. Comes with a decent cable length of about 7 feet, and the from the wall cord isn't proprietary and won't be hard to replace with a longer one, which will extend the range to about 10 feet, well more than enough. The battery life on this notebook does not betray its size. Despite the power sipping components, I could only get 5 hours of internet work use, 4.75 hours of streaming video, but an hour and 15 minutes of game time. Super high cool gaming laptops only last for 45 minutes away from the plug, but with this Acer you'll get just over an hour. Go you! The build quality doesn't impress, but for less than $500, at least it doesn't feel like it's going to crumble as soon as a couple palms rest on the chassis. Expect plenty of flex around the keyboard, but the display is surprisingly rigid. The shiny metallic-ish finish on the plastic body doesn't show fingerprints and will take quite a while to be visibly stained. Same goes for the keyboard, where the keys feel very cheap and coarse, but still won't be easily tarnished. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right are the power and battery indicators, headset in, USB 2.0A, and a lock slot. The left is where you'll find two USB 3.0A ports for a total of three standard USBs, HDMI, gigabit LAN, and the teeny tiny power hole. No USB-C, so you'll need an adapter if you want to charge your modern Android phone, and no Thunderbolt because cheap. Only one display output is a shame, but what can you do? Does it output video at 120Hz? I don't know, but I will find that out later, so make sure you're subscribed for that video. On the bottom of this giant are 14 screws to remove. I would highly recommend a prying tool to get the bottom cover off. I was successful with my guitar pick, but it did crack in the process. Inside we see a giant waste of space. But there is a caddy for a 2.5 inch drive with the cable already installed. I was already impressed with some recent Acer notebooks that threw the needed cables in the box, and this is yet another step up. Only one DIMM slot for RAM though, and on a 17-inch notebook, that's just stupid. They obviously recommissioned this MOBO from a much smaller device. And you can bet that I'll be uploading videos where I install another hard drive and upgrade the memory and toy around with it, so you better make sure you're subscribed for that. In other news, guess where your hard-earned money didn't go? Right into that battery gap. And these speakers aren't even secure, they're just loosely held in place by these plastic grips. This outstanding craftsmanship is what makes me feel like this notebook was 3D printed by my next door neighbor and pieced together with leftover parts from Wish.com. Thanks Acer, I love you too. With the cover back on and the speakers held down by just the bottom cover itself, it's time to look at the keyboard. 
I love this keyboard. There's one thing that Acer knows it has to get right on this thing, and it's so transparent because it's simple and doesn't take any risks at all. It's got a full-size numpad with double wide zero, enter, and plus in their rightful homes, and we get dedicated home end and page scrolling keys. Is the action perfect? No. The keys can be lightly pressed down by their corner, actuate, and not actually register, which could lead to typing errors, but in real-world use, like typing up this monologue, I rarely experienced a missed stroke. It's also relatively quiet, even though the noise projects outward and doesn't get absorbed by the notebook. And functionally, it's missing only a couple things. A backlight, which is understandable at this MSRP, and a function lock on the keyboard itself. The function lock can be toggled through the UEFI, but something on the keyboard would be much more convenient. The touchpad is okay. It feels a little cheap and has less than ideal acceleration. I turned the sensitivity down a couple notches, and I don't normally feel like adjusting anything, and I still overshoot menu bars and icons. It also doesn't have physical keys, but nothing does, and the right click is hard to find. For the most part, it doesn't get in the way while I'm typing, and can be disabled via hotkey. The display on this notebook is, of course, rather gargantuan. More expensive models are 1080p, but this one only does 1600 by 900 Sure, 1080p is noticeably more crisp, but 900p is perfectly livable. Those who scoff at that idea play too many games and need more vitamin D in their life like me. This is an LCD panel, so colors distort at a close angle, but the screen tilts back just far enough to find a comfortable view on your lap. When tilted back, the screen folds under the display, lifting the body away from whatever surface upon which it rests, and also spares said surface from its mildly warm temperatures. These pixels get one tick over comfortably bright and just dark enough for a pitch black room. Colors aren't accurate and don't pop, but also aren't dull. Media is okay to watch, nothing stands out as amazing, and the ghosting is as bad as can be expected, especially while gaming. I for sure wouldn't want this to be the only display I use. Same story with the speakers. Just be thankful there's two of them. If the volume is all the way up, they won't fill the room, yet somehow dialogue is annoyingly tinny. I don't think these speakers know what bass is, so the bass in Calm Like a Bomb by Rage for the Machine is a whisper, and the deep bass from The Package by A Perfect Circle, you wouldn't even know it's there if you've only heard this song through this notebook. At least the EQ is flat and there's no software trickery, so loud noises won't deaden softer tones. So at least the mid and high ranges of the EQ band lose out equally. a test of the webcam on the Acer Aspire 3 720p. The motion isn't half bad. I've got one LED light on both sides of my face. Let's turn on my super loud AC unit to see if you can still understand what I'm saying. Now my AC unit is on. Can you hear it in the background? If not, then that's great noise cancellation on the Acer Aspire 3. System performance of this Acer Nitro 3 should actually be indistinguishable for casual gamers compared to the Core i5 models. Unless demanding work programs are being used, word processing, emails, and web browsing shouldn't feel any different. This is thanks largely in part to the NVMe SSD, which reads at over 2 gigs a second, simply a miracle for a notebook in this price range. I wouldn't want to do complex 1080p video editing with this notebook and the lowly Core i3 benchmarks far below its 45 watt CPU cousins, but most users won't notice a difference in normal use. Chrome boots up and loads just fine, YouTube videos pause and resume, go full screen and back without skipping a beat, even on battery saver. I never once thought to myself that the CPU was holding this notebook back. Except, well, on to gaming. 
I previously reviewed an HP laptop with an 11th gen Core i5 and Intel Iris Xe graphics, which is a step up from this. It could be the case that I just don't remember enough from that experience, but I don't think that Iris Xe was, like, so much better than this. Can you play everything? No, there won't be any Call of Duty, Forza Horizon, or Elden Ring, but most casual games will boot up and run decently well. Popular indie titles like Dead Cells and Moonlighter run perfectly fine, as long as you can tolerate the ghosting, and the battery even lasts longer than an hour and 15 minutes while playing Dead Cells, and I'm not talking like an hour and 45 minutes, like at least three hours of Dead Cells, maybe four. And heat? What heat? There's no overheating here. Not even close. For the bottom line, is this Core i3 model worth it, or is the i5 a better bang for your buck? If upgrading the RAM and storage brings the price up to or within $50 of the Core i5 model with the 1080p screen, you might as well just go for the Core i5 model. I highly doubt that the 1080p screen is better in any other regard like color or viewing angles, but sharpness is… cool, I guess. That metric puts you at $430. If you can find the Core i3 model for less than $430, it's worth it. If not, just go for the i5 model. As far as compared to the competition, it's really tough in the 17.3 inch segment. This Acer Aspire 3 is a solid performer as far as I'm concerned. If you're shopping for a notebook of this size and want to go cheap, start your search with the Acer Aspire 3. It's not a tough notebook to beat given the speakers, but with a good keyboard and okay-ish screen, you certainly won't be disappointed. In conclusion, students get two thumbs up. Yeah, it's big, it's heavy, but it's dead cheap, and has a good keyboard to get you through a paper or 30 with surprisingly low amounts of hassle. The battery life is only good, not great, or even very good, but it'll last you through a couple two-hour classes on Battery Saver, and the keyboard won't drive your classmates or cellmates nuts. Casual gamers can go for this if you really want to save some coin. The nice thing about bare bones graphics performance is that you take what you can get and are grateful for it instead of having a mid-tier GTX whatever and long to push the detail sliders farther to the right. Like, ooh, I finally get to spend a thousand dollars so I can go two ticks over. Wow, still three ticks away from extreme. What a life. Competitive gamers, I think I found a purpose for this notebook for you. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, if Razer made a plastic platform this size with pretty lights, you'd shell out $200 for it. Admit it. If you're looking for a desktop replacement, I'd keep looking. It only has one video output and only one RAM slot. Yes, the storage is super low cost to upgrade and the screen is actually as big to your face as a 50 inch TV that's 10 feet away, but you'll get so much more out of a 15.6 inch notebook with a mid-tier Core i5 and Nvidia GPU like in the Acer Nitro 5. Home users can't go wrong, especially if this is the size of notebook you're after. Grandma's eyes are getting old and can't see so good? Little Johnny needs something he can play Lego Star Wars and watch PragerU Kids on? Great, buy it. Maybe the competing HP or Lenovo notebooks have better speakers, but who cares? Headphones make the world a happier, safer, and much less annoying place anyway. This has been a review of the Acer Aspire 3 here on Thieges Notebook Review. Feel free to like, subscribe, and let the world know if you use this notebook and how much you love it. In any case, stay tuned for more Acer Aspire 3 content here on Thieges Notebook Review, including upgrades and gameplay. Thanks for watching, and you guys, have a good night.